Hello everybody. Not seen you for a while, so make sure look at we that. We haven't seen them for a very long while. No, no. <laughs> we haven't seen anybody for a very long while. Well, while. yeah, but um, we're still alive and well and still in the faith and we're still, we're still fighting on. And with this little piece that we wanted to share is in um, 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and we're just going to read verse 5. We're going to do like um, verse by verse so we don't miss anything because it's, it's really good stuff. So Andy's going to read uh, 5, 3, 5. You done? Mm. Okay. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you and our labour be in vain. In this um, little chapter, he um, Paul is saying that when he'd left the church that he'd established there and grew, and grew um, he told them, which he's told them before in other parts of the Bible, in other churches, that they would have affliction, that they would have um, temptations, that they would have struggles, they would have tribulation, they'd have pressings like Paul got for standing up for Christ because you're coming out of the world. And he's saying that for this cause, when he could no longer forbear. Now, the forbear word is endure. So it, it's suggesting either Paul is, is going through hardships and struggles, or he couldn't wait any longer. He wants to know if his church is still doing all right, because he loves them. He's, he's born this church. He even says somewhere that he, he's, um, he births them. They're like his children. He even says that he's because he's warned them in verse four it, yeah. that um, that they're going to have tribulations, and he talks about the tempter and the tempter in this yeah. um, this passage is Satan. Yeah, yeah. So he's warned them that things are going to come against them because they've turned to Christ and they've started following um, those guidelines that Paul has given them, and so he. He wants to know whether um, they are still following or because of the t tribulations that he'd warned about in, in the previous verse, in verse 4, whether because of those tribulations and because Satan will come against them because now they're doing the work of Christ, because now they're following Christ, um, whether they have uh, succumbed to these temptations or whether in fact they have stood fast on the word that um, Paul had brought them when he had set up the church and been with them. Yeah, because he did. He does say in this ch in this passage that to, he's sent to know your faith. So he is. He wants a report to see if it's in vain. Not that following Christ is in vain, because he knows Christ. But but to see if his church is, is some of them have been broken yes, off because they definitely says, get breaking off they definitely do whether our labour be in vain so yeah. when he's saying that he's, he's not talking about the work that they have actually done it's it's the, it's God's work so he's yeah. talking about um, taking the word of the Lord to these people and sharing it with them and whether that has been a waste of time whether that has been in vain because. At the first um, tribulations, uh, they've they've fallen. Yeah, and like I said, and I can't remember where it is, but Paul definitely talks about he's laboured, he travail, travails in labour for them. So he's he's he sees it that he's the 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 leader, which he is uh, on earth as such, and the, he's the shepherd, and this is his flock, and he's because he talks later about praying through the night and all this kind of thing. So that's labour. We, we, when we take people into a church, when they come in, they're placed into our hands. I mean, for mostly they're in the hands of Christ if they're born again. But we have a duty of care to labour, which means prayer, which means not teaching is, is necessary and correction and rebuking. And, yeah, and discipling. And do, we've talked about this before about shepherding. And we, it's, a, it's a serious subject and needs to be done with men and women of God that love Christ. And, and the, it's born in their hearts that they love the brethren. Okay, so this is one of the key things. So then let's read 6. But now, when Timotheus came from you unto us, and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that ye have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us, as we also 
to see you. And that's what I just said, that this born in you, this burden for people, for the flock, is beautiful. And now Paul has come back. Sorry, Which Timothy has come back to tell Paul that these people that we have planted churches, they are of like mind. They are in love and in charity and caring and agape love for their brethren. And not only that, they wish to see you, Paul, too. They wish to see you come back with your ministry and, and your love and care to oversee them. Ain't that wonderful? Think about, I, I, I won't, it doesn't matter where it is or, or who it is, but I've known people in church before that don't even like the elders, don't even like the ministers. This is, this is, that's not agape love, that's not real love. This is real love here. They're talking about that they really want to spend time with Paul and they're anxious for him to come to them again and that their faith is holding up which is amazing, good tidings, good news. That's what they say about the, the New Testament. The Testament is like a statement of fact, like you testify, which means you stand in court and you, you witness of something you know is a fact or you know to be true. So if you know Jesus Christ, you can give a testimony of his love in your life and what he's done for you and how he's died for you. And this is the good news coming back. This is what Paul has brought, basically, back to them no, timothy. timothy i will get it right <laughs> you see if it was paul and fly away peter fly away paul but it's not it don't work with timothy no i don't know if you knew that but that song's all about um um peter and paul going out taking the word and then coming back see so this is timothy doing it he, he's not in the song he's not a dicky bird anyway so that's fantastic so let's read uh seven yeah seven Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. And, and so what, this, what he's saying is that when we... Look, you've got to get this. This is so important. This is why we have to share faith. We have to know Christ personally so we can give a faith, so we can give a testimony to others to lift them. See, because when people are struggling, what are you going to do? If you're worldly, you're going to say things like, oh yeah, I went through that, it's quite a difficult time, and don't worry, you'll get better as you get older, you know, that's rubbish, that's not a testimony of Christ. You say things like, I get like that sometimes, hey, I still do, you know, I, I'm missing my son at the moment, and and I told like the people at work today that I'm, I'll, I'll be all right when I've had a bit of a cry. There's nothing wrong with that because that's I'm, I'm not talking about Jesus. I'm just talking about life. Sometimes life's hard. But I knew, I know in my heart that I just need to go to the Lord. And I went off to the toilet and I, I, I prayed to God and he just warmed my heart. And I did cry, but I came out completely different because Jesus Christ lifts us. He lit, the Spirit will lift us over things. And Paul is heard I mean, it's not just paul because paul uses the terminology of we so he's often saying and because we heard of the good tidings and so what he's saying is that it's lifted them over their afflictions this is paul you know if he needs lifting over affliction and struggles we need it too that's why we're in the church together don't be silent don't be hidden talk about your faith to your brethren tell them Hey, I've been struggling today, but you know, when I went and prayed, God lifted me over. And I thought of that time when he took me out of the miry clay, when he lifted me, when I lost that thing or when I did that or when I got upset or all them years I struggled, but God brought me through it. I can see that he brought me through it, you see. So this is what we need to do. So eight. For now we live if ye stand fast in the Lord. So that's a bold statement. We're only alive in Christ. All, all other things are death. All other things are ending in this world except Jesus Christ's blood that washes us and cleanses us and able to give us eternal life. And Paul is making, for now we live, if ye stand fast in the Lord. We only live in Jesus. You know that, don't you? Every, you know, there's thousands of roads in this world. There's thousands of ways and they all go to hell except one way which is Jesus, which takes you to heaven. Oh, I nearly burst into song then. 
So that that would have been bad. So that's what we need to remember. We need to lift each other when we're struggling or when we think it. You know, you know, times is hard. We're making this video to try and lift your spirits. I'm I'm often grumpy. I'm often an, a bit. You know, Andy calls me a, a doom and gloom artist, but. But I'm that way because God's made me that way. I do get upset. I do struggle. Not with my faith. I struggle with the pains of the world. I struggle with the pains in the church. I struggle with things that we should be doing and we're not doing. I don't mean that pointedly. I mean in love. I mean we don't love each other like we should, you see. So we need to do these things. These are, these are, these are the, fla the flags coming up. Do it. Do it. You know. Anyway, nine. For what thanks can we render to God again for you? For all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God. Well, he's basically saying that how, how can we thank God enough for the report? How can we thank God enough for the joy that's coming back? Wow, that's true, you know. When you hear and you see other people's faith and testimony, I remember um, years ago when John had been poorer and I, I saw Mo's faith on the text messages. It lifted me tremendously. It really did. It was beautiful. And um, what can you do but thank God for hearing that testimony. But thank God we have people in our church that know Jesus Christ. Thank God that when you're struggling, that they can say to they're struggling, but you can pray together and lift each other. How wonderful is that? And, and that's what Paul's stating. So we do 10. Night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. <laughs> you can jump in any time, you know, you don't need to. I can't, you know, because you, you, you don't take a breath. <laughs> but it, well, I, Until well, you I'll, take a breath. <laughs> well, well, yeah, sure. <laughs> Too late, right. So, night and day, right. <laughs> no, joking. No, so, so Paul say night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face. Paul is so longing to see their faces now because he's heard of their joy and they're wanting to see him. This is beautiful, isn't it? I mean, this is this is ultimate Jesus Christ love and humanity born in us. That's but so he's, beautiful. But he's not, he's not being, um, he's not saying you're perfect. No. Every, no. Everything that you're doing is absolutely spot on. No, it's and far from not, that. not of, you know, you're not making any errors or mistakes. No. Um, what he's saying is, I'm hearing these good reports, and now I want to come and help you. I want to yeah, show you those little bits the edges. that you need to yeah. just iron out, those things that you need to change, put right, so that your faith can grow and grow and you can be stronger. Because he's being a shepherd. And this is it in love, you see. Can you imagine? You think about you must you must know a time in your life where you've criticised somebody in the church. Yeah, I know it's going on a bit, isn't it? But you criticise someone in the church or in your heart. You've thought about something. But have you done it in real love? Paul, you listen to how Paul's talking. He so wants to go and see them. But then he adds the little bit at the end, you know, because the bit you're lacking. Paul knows he's lacking too. But what he's doing is, he's saying in love, pure love and godliness, that, oh, he just wants to look in their face, that I might see your face. Not that I might see your errors. Not that I might see where you're going wrong and I can like whoop you into shape and get, tan your hide. He, we will do that. But but he'll, but he, but for mostly, it's out of love. Wouldn't it be great if we could really correct each other out of love? And also, wouldn't it be great if when we did correct out of love, the heart would receive that correction? That That's what happens in the Church of God. That's what really happens when you do it right. Um, but it needs two people to do that right, you see. But it's beautiful. I don't want to make... This is not a criticism. I'm not criticising anybody. It's beautiful. I just think it's beautiful when you see it, that you might see your face and it might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Wow, beautiful. I, I, I love it that we've... Again, that I know people that correct my faith. <laughs> it's just fantastic. Right, do you want to read? Do 11 and 12 then. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you and the lord make you to increase and abound in love one to another and toward all men even as we do toward you so the beginning of that in 11 is praying that god and jesus are going to direct your path direct our way unto you how great is that 
If the Lord directs your path, that is the greatest thing you could ever do. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love. See how the Lord does this. Now, the Lord don't make you do it. You do it through prayer. And and I think that in 11, um, Paul's saying, isn't he? Because it says, um, and direct, uh, direct our way mm. unto you. So he's saying that he's he's praying, he's hoping mm. um, that the Lord will... Yeah. Give Direct him the increase in money or whatever was, so he can get there. He will it. send him in that way yeah, and not yeah. send him off on a different direction. Yeah, because he's only going to do what the Lord says. If the Lord says, well, I don't want you to go there right now. I need some other things doing at the moment, Paul. Paul did this often. He was trying to get to other places in other times. How wonderful that this is. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong to call out to God, I, Lord, I want to do that. But for his glory, you notice how Paul's not, he's not visiting people because they're family. Or he just wants to see someone or it would be a good shopping trip. You know, it's got nothing to do with that. It's not going to tents or us to see how the latest, you know, igloo's made. It's nothing to, nothing about that. It's all about God's glory. It's all about establishing faith. I think that should have been tabernacle, not igloo. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, I meant dome tent, but obviously didn't do it then. <laughs> um, yeah, so we did 12. And look, so now he wants the Lord to make you to increase and abound in love to one another. And toward all men, toward people you don't like. And, Let and that he's love grow up. Even even as those people Paul and, and yeah. his his group of followers, yeah. even as they are giving their love to these people that yeah. they they have uh, set up in Thessalonica. Yeah, so then do thirteen. Thessalonica, isn't that how they say it? Yes, yes. possibly. <laughs> I don't know what you're asking me for, but I oh, okay. can't speak English there. <laughs> Go on. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. So to the end goal, Paul's purpose in his life is to present the church, the bride of Christ, to be unblameable in holiness before God. Now, that's faith, because that takes faith to believe that God will do that in us. God God definitely can do it in us, and we have to have faith that he will do it in us, because we probably can't see that we're that holy, but God will make us so. And Paul is praying that. He notices he prays through the night. He's praying this, he's praying that. That's how he's going to establish the church. I know we're pretty late now, aren't we? Well, we ain't done a video for two weeks. So you got to get your money's worth. <laughs> you were shocked the first time we did seven. Who was shocked? You were shocked. Shocked? Shocked. She does you shoot. You blamed me the first time we well, did 17 minutes. This now could be part of your fault as well. I don't think so. Well, one flesh. <laughs> Bless you all. See you later. Love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>